Ryan's Mobile One. This gnarly looking piece of art is actually some genius invention and it's an endangered species all at the same time. Save the manuals. You don't see many manual transmission cars nowadays. They say that manual transmission is like an anti-theft device because millennials don't know how to drive it. This should be of interest to folks. Uh, this is actually a clutch in almost all of its entirety. The only thing that's missing is the part that pushes on here, which would be the slave cylinder and master cylinder. This is how they work. This is a fork and it works like a lever and a fulcrum, this being the fulcrum. So this lever pushes on these levers to let go of a spring-loaded plate that's binding down. This is a fake plastic input shaft like what you'd find on a manual transmission and inside at the back end of that it fits into a little bearing. That bearing is a pilot bearing. There's a, the end of the little, this is called a pilot tool. It basically helps uh, get the input shaft resting in a little nestled thing in the crankshaft on the back of an engine. Crankshaft turns the flywheel. The flywheel is where the teeth are. This is actually teeth that engage with the starter to turn the crankshaft to get the engine started. The clutch itself, the part that wears out typically is either going to be the throwout bearing. You can see that this moves a little bit. This is all going to become pretty clear here in a minute. This has to push down on these levers, but these levers are turning uh, upwards of 800,000 RPM at idle to 7,000 RPM when it's uh, really revved up. When we flip this up, we can see the Oreo cookie effect. So there's that little bearing that goes in the end of the crankshaft that the pilot tool goes into. This is a pilot bearing. Here you can see this is the clutch disc. It's kind of like a brake pad, you know, like what you'd find on a car, only it just faces both ways. And instead of having a caliper or something, this is what does all the squeezing. This is a spring here. There's three little strips of metal that are causing the inner part, this plate, to push down. If you squeeze, probably not strong enough by hand, but if you squeeze this on there either by tightening the bolts that attach it, time warp, my <laughs> phone rang, I answered it, I got called out on something, and I forgot to film the rest of it. And that clutch is now installed in the vehicle. However, I do have the cutaway still kicking around. Uh, I cut it open. <laughs> I'm going to show you all the things that can fail in a clutch and things that you should address. Uh, one of which is a rear mainsail. While you're in there, while you have the flywheel off, it's a good idea to replace it. The way to tell a bad one is they just get, get stiff. And once they're stiff, they don't seal as well. A bearing, it's really dry. You can hear the balls just rattling in there. Uh, the clutch fork failed. <laughs> Everything failed on this at the same time. The fulcrum also, it's got a lot of wear on it. Uh, the back to how it works though, here's the flywheel, you notice it's the flywheel because of the teeth, like I said, the starter engages with that. On a manual transmission you'll have a flywheel like this one, and on an automatic transmission you will have a flex plate is what they call it, it's skinnier. But you see the bolt pattern that you have here, this is for a Toyota 4Runner 1994, and this is for a 2008 Subaru Legacy Outback. You see it's a similar bolt pattern. I think the count's the same. This is eight pattern and this also is eight. You'll notice that this has different bolt holes so that you can put on the pressure plate. This has just four bolt holes. Some will have three, some will have five to bolt on a torque converter. You'll see the little circle wear marks here. You usually get to this through the starter opening. The torque converter will actually have the ring gear on it. You can actually take these on and off by heating them. The way that they do it is it's not actually welded. You can see the little crack right there. You heat this up with a torch and you can pop it off and then you heat it to put it back onto the next one. They're just a fit by expansion and contraction being hot or not. The reason why this one doesn't have to weigh as much is because the torque converter it's hefty, it weighs a lot on its own, so you don't have to worry about that. This is the disc. This is normally the part that fails. Usually, if you have a good disc, see, and this one's failed, you see where the lines are going here and it's getting close to the rivets. This isn't too, too bad, but it does also have a little bit of a lip here. You can see just like a brake rotor will get. It says brake bad material on both sides. It's got springs that help to absorb some of the shock so that you don't stall the vehicle. But what can happen is if these get too skinny, then the clamping force that comes from the springs and everything that are 
on the pressure plate bolted onto the flywheel. It can't squeeze the disc well enough and it'll slip. And what that looks like, or what that feels like from the driver's seat is when you rev it up, the RPMs go up, but it doesn't move. You watch your speedometer just kind of going slow and the RPMs are high and the clutch is out and you're just like, oh. So that's what a worn out clutch disc looks like. If you ride the clutch, meaning that you rest your foot on the clutch pedal all the time, and what that does is that causes this to be in contact with that and wear it out, throw out bearing against the pressure plate. So it'll cause a shorter lifespan of this, but it'll also take a little bit of clamping force away from the pressure plate, and that causes this to be sliding and grinding and wearing on both the flywheel and on the pressure plate and that can cause your clutch to wear out prematurely for this to get thin and for this to wear out. This is a flywheel and it also failed. There's some cracks in it. I'll zoom you in so you can see those. So you can see on the surface there's a whole bunch of this surface cracking and then you also see a bunch of hot spots where it's turned blue. You'll see the same thing on the bottom side of the pressure plate. So I take the pressure plate in and you can see these hot spots these cause for an uneven surface or it's not smooth, it's not consistent anymore. And that leads us to the throw out bearing. The throw out bearing on this was actually pretty dry too. So you can kind of see and hear what's the problem with this. And again, this just works on the fingers of the clutch pressure plate. So the pressure plate holds the disc down and it uses a spring force to maintain contact. These are those springs that I was showing you earlier. It's got three layers of spring steels on it. It just basically pushes down when you push down on this. And you see how tore up these teeth got because the throat bearing was so dry. I think this actually seized up and then freed up again. When you push these down, it raises up on that like that. And when that happens, instead of being locked on there, see how this uh, little alignment thing goes? You got two bolts that go in there. So when you push down on that, instead of being crushed in the middle, like you see here, it lets up off of it. And this can turn freely. <laughs> it's just because of the cutting, it's rough and it's just not. But anyway, this can move freely and then your engine rotation is no longer yeah, you know, hooked into there. So these can fail because these teeth can fail, uh, the springs can fail, you can get hot spots on them. Any of those things will wear out a pressure plate. Springs wear out over time, so when you buy a clutch kit, you get a new pressure plate, a new disc, a new throw-out bearing, a new pilot bearing, and you get a little thing of lube that goes on the input shaft. I just wanted to get this video done. This is going to just be a wild card Wednesday video. Uh, Sunday I'll have a video about uh, replacing the clutch and what the symptoms are if you have a hole blown through your clutch fork, so that should be pretty fun. I'll give close-ups of like the pedal, like the clutch pedal, what it feels like when you're pushing on it with a bad bearing and a bad clutch pedal. When you push on this, it's really bumpy. You can feel it, not so much see it. Anyway, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe.